No, dark crystals are not the end goal. It's actually shrooms. You want to freaking do some shrooms, boy. Before launch, there were a whole bunch of different like beginner tips, mistakes that were being thrown around, tier lists, etc, etc. A lot of them actually don't hold true now. And so in this video, I wanted to correct some of them and then throw a whole bunch of more tips at you. Hi. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Lace and this is a Tower of Fantasy video and like I said, I've got to correct a lot of different things that I talked about, some tips that I gave. I, I admit it, you know, sometimes I make mistakes and unfortunately a lot of it was based on a lot of different assumptions and some different updates that we just did not anticipate. Alright, and so with that being said, let's start off with the first thing that I said, the most important one that I just kept stressing so much. So if I come over here, you'll see level 24 out of 24, 54k EXP, I told you guys do not overcap your exp i kept overcapping and i don't care anymore that my guys is literally the new tip go freaking wild go do all of your explorations go find those chests etc so if i show you my astra astra is at 71.7 percent exploration and that's because well i freaking got bored and i wanted to keep playing and so i kept playing now there is a reason why i'm saying this now and the reason is because of this guy over here so as you can see and as we've all experienced it by now the time gating is insane day two we have a max level of 24 27 30 and it just does not get much better right eventually it will go up to like 42 and it's going to give us like one level a day and so it's for this reason that I'm saying don't worry about overcapping your max level because there is just way too many sources of exp that you're going to be overcapping when you're level 80 anyway it doesn't even matter or level 70 whatever max cap is and so the next tip slash correction that I had was you see the supply pods up there I said don't collect the supply pods because it's going to overcap your exp uh, as per point number one just go over cap it, don't even worry. However, the real tip is actually about the triangle password chests. So I'm talking about this one right here. And as you can see, we have this key system, right? 14 of the blue keys, three of the purples, and two of the gold. Now, the interesting thing is that when Vera drops, when 2.0 drops, these keys are gonna be super, super incredibly high value because these keys will actually, in Vera, unlock more different currencies that will get you more gacha rolls, get you more of those dark crystals. And so honestly, I originally said spam these guys because it doesn't even matter. These are respawnable chests. Now, these keys, there is a possibility that maybe 2.0 is released in the next three months. There's a possibility that, that it's actually going to be released in the next, what, one year or something. If it's going to be in the next three months, they're probably going to tell us in a roadmap. So my advice is to actually just hold on to these keys for as long as you can, because to be honest, they don't even give like anything giga special, right? It's just some weapon EXP, etc, etc. And then if we do manage to hold enough and then 2.0 drops, maybe in like three months time, some people think it's going to come in one month. I don't think so. Then we will cash out and get a whole bunch of those dark crystals because the way the exploration works in 2.0 in Vera is that this doesn't exist anymore but you instead use those tickets to open up for gacha things to get more of the dark crystals. So TLDR is essentially hoard as many of these keys as you can. If you're stuck on progression, go ahead and use them, but there may be a good payout day one day. The next thing I want to talk about is the crew system in which it's pretty much like your clan or your guild or whatever. Essentially, join a crew, go do your dailies, aid requests, donate, and this is actually going to contribute to this milestone thing over here in which you're going to be getting more rewards. But with those tokens that you also get from the crew missions, except these missions, you are going to get this currency. And with that currency, you're going to be able to purchase the potent Omnium Crystal, Missile Brass Shards, whatever, whatever, and you're going to get more as your crew store levels up. And to be honest, it's okay to kind of like join a random crew and just achieve these different things because at the end of the day, you're still getting the currency. All right, and so moving to my next point, it's cooking. Now, cooking is a really interesting one because essentially I said that you should do cooking so that you can get some recipes so that you can actually get these crystals. So if I tap this one, it's going to give me a mushroom soup. However, the true power of cooking is actually in the buffs that it gives you. But let me show you something here first. So I'm going to attempt to cook something. I'm going to cook a bowl of cereal and I know that this this is the recipe because I looked it up online. Now, you can see that there is a success gauge over here at 21%. What you need to do to boost this up is to essentially just spam one of these two ingredients. In my case, I'm going to say it's the milk because you can actually buy that and you can see that the success rate has gone up to 100%. Hit that button and hopefully I'm going to get a bowl of cereal. 
nice. And so that's the tip for actually cooking. But I want to talk a little bit more about the foods themselves, because as you can see here, there are actually like status effects, right? Scrolling down a little bit more, it actually gets pretty freaking jacked. Flame resistance, vault resistance, but these are the real juices. Flame attack plus 1%, flame attack plus 45%, ice attack plus 1%, ice attack plus 80%. It lasts for 900 seconds. That's like 15 minutes, man. And so yeah, in regards to cooking, this is the real juice. Yes, those black crystals are really nice, but this is really going to help you take down those like harder bosses that you might be having trouble with. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is that if something looks like it can be interacted with, like that vending machine over there, it probably actually can be. Now, I've actually used up that vending machine and I think I might have used up that one as well. So up ahead, you can see that there is a vending machine here as well. I'm going to, yep, search and hopefully I will get some kind of soda, maybe a raspberry soda, maybe a strawberry soda. And there we go, iced strawberry soda. Remember to click it to loot it and it's gone into my inventory. Okay, so here we are in the mission terminal screen. I'm gonna go into achievements and I really wanna talk about this because I was saying, oh, go do your achievements so that you can get your black jemmies. No, dark crystals are not the end goal. It's actually shrooms. You wanna freaking do some shrooms, boy. And so the reason that you want these shrooms is because look at this, permanently increase max endurance by 50 when consumed. Very much like your stamina pot thing uh, from Zelda, very much a permanent increase to your fighting capabilities as well because Ariel uses this, your gliding capabilities, etc., etc. And the other place that you get these shrooms is actually in, I believe, map exploration. So if I come over here, there was once a mighty mushroom here. I have since taken it and now I am flyer than ever. Now, I don't know about you guys, but like having two relic slots has been a real pain in the ass. And that's when I discovered the relic set system. So if I click into relics, you can see with the deploy tab, there are actually opportunities for three sets of relics. And so what this means is that you can actually have up to essentially six relics up for deployment. However, you cannot actually change the deployment if you are in combat. So you can see two of the sets actually have the jetpack because I haven't changed it, but I'm hitting G and I'm cycling through these relics. So essentially you kind of want like an exploration one in which you have um, the jetpack as well as the glove thing, because this freaking glove is gonna get you to places that you shouldn't be able to get to, such as that island, that carnival that I just showed you. Nobody should be there, but I was there. I'll let you guys know how I did it down in the description below. That's from my friend Sky. Thank you for the video. It was very, very helpful. This is essentially the method as to how you actually get up there. You will, however, require that, um, that slingshot gun that I just showed you because he is essentially going to be climbing up from the bottom, which is not normally the way that you get in. I do believe we unlock this on like day three or day four. So hopefully you won't actually have to do something like this. But if you wanna try it, it's actually a lot of fun. Again, my guys, I will link this in the description below, but let's move on to the next point. And that next point is this guy over here. The SSR relic that we get, I do believe we're gonna be getting the Colossus Arm. This is actually already obtainable. And coming over to here, you'll see that Zachem has released a video. Big shout out to the boy. It is actually already possible to get these Colossus arms. And unfortunately, it looks like the video isn't loading right now, but essentially what's gonna happen is that if you get these Colossus arms, and then on, I believe, was it week four? Week three, we get the Colossus arms again. You're gonna be getting the shards. And so what that means is that you're gonna be getting the upgrade to these. And so you may be asking, why exactly would I want a bunch of Colossus arms and like potentially even star it up? Now, now, let me show you over here. Essentially, you've got a bunch of heavy arms. You're gonna be going around smacking people. And by getting the one star, you will also get two missiles as well with each attack. And this is going to be really, really freaking strong. You can like drop this on a boss. You'll probably crush them in half a second. And so the next thing I wanna talk about is this bad boy over here, our mount. And whilst we all love this uh, lovable cube, I do need to stress that not all mounts were actually born equal. Now, let me head over to the wiki and you will see that there are actually a whole bunch of different mounts of which one, two, three, four, five are available for us right now. I wanna talk about this one over here. This chaser mount is actually really, really freaking good because it's floating. And when it's floating, it means that you're not gonna be getting stopped by a couple of little freaking rocks. On one hand, it might be placebo. On the other hand, maybe I just opened up a whole world of collection for you collectors. However, what I do wanna say at the very end is that this is gonna be a rare drop from the Vermin Brothers, which are essentially a set of bosses found here, 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 and here. I see uh, I see this uh, beehive over here and I wanna talk about this. And the reason I wanna talk about this beehive is because if you attack it and subsequently kill everything that comes out of it, you get honey. 
Honey is actually a really, really important resource. So did I get some honey? Yes, I did. I got three honeys and I will show you exactly why. So here I'm back on the recipes page. And as you can see, we've got this honey dew melon bread. Yes, it is on CN right now, but this bad boy is giving the ice attack, ice attack, and it's using honey. Now I said that again, that is CN only. Let me go up a little bit and find you guys another example. This one over here, honey, Ice attack 1% and plus 80. So this one's even freaking better. Honey is actually just used so freaking much. You got the fire dragon fruit tea, flame attack. And so this point certainly goes hand in hand with my other point in which I'm saying cooking is important. Farm honey for cooking, that's a TLDR. And on this point, there's actually a strategy that you can use to AFK farm. The caveat is unfortunately uh, you need zero because if you don't, then you've already failed step one. Honey farming, here's how you do it, equip zero. I don't have a zero, so I can't do this. But yeah, honey in terms of like the top tier foods or like the most value foods, I would say it is certainly something that you want to be farming. If you see one of these beehives, go hit it. So I see another one over there. I'm gonna collect this grain first because I'm a freaking scavenger and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. However, my guys, with that, that is actually gonna bring us to the end of this video. I don't know if I have many more tips to tell you guys aside from have fun with this game, man. I'm having a freaking blast when I I was like, ah, oh, forget about the EXP overcapping thing. I was like, man, this game is so freaking fun. I was just like going around, collecting things, like shooting things up um, in a virtual context. You know, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say anything. But yeah, the main tip that I really want to emphasize is don't worry about like, oh man, I shouldn't grab that supply pot over there. Go freaking get it, my guys. Go freaking get it. Because this level cap thing is like giga, giga cringe. I think it's actually going to be okay. And so my dudes, let me know if these tips were helpful down below. And if you do have some of your own, do let us know as well. However, if you did enjoy this video or kind of found it helpful, please consider leaving a like on it, subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. Otherwise, as a, as a helicopter once said, uh, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.